starting today with new developments in what is being described as the biggest sex abuse scandal in the history of Olympic sports. Former Olympic team doctor Larry Nasser will spend the rest of his life behind bars after he pleaded guilty to multiple counts of criminal sexual conduct and other charges. Now, for the first time, former USA Gymnastics team coordinators Bella and Marta Caroli are breaking their silence about the scandal. NBC's Savannah Guthrie visited them at their ranch in Texas, where many gymnasts say they were sexually abused by Nasser. Savannah's here in a moment, but first this. When you think about some of the biggest names in gymnastics, Ali Raceman, Simone Biles, Michaela Maroney, and they say they were violated here. How does right. that sit with that, you? That, that's awful, but I would say even if they have big names or they have no names, any child who was violated by Nassar, it's a crime and it's so sad. I'll tell you what people say now. Okay. How could they not have known this was happening with gymnast after gymnast after gymnast. Yes, but if you couldn't suspect anything, I heard during the testimonies that some of the parents were in therapy room with their own child, and Larry Nassar was performing this. And, and the parent know. couldn't see how I could see. Hmm. Savannah, welcome. Hi, nice to be here. That, and just listening to that, my first instinct is that's not going to go over well with the parents. It's like she had, they had charge of these gymnasts and were entrusted with their care. And you can't just look at the parents and say, you didn't know either. Well, here's the thing. I mean, there are a lot of questions about this. Larry Nasser, as you mentioned, tried, convicted, sentenced, spending the rest of his life and then some in jail. The question is, did they know? That's the first question. We saw right there the Crowley say, no, we didn't know. The next question is, is just as important. Should you have known? Right, why not? Why didn't you know? And what was it about that culture inside USA Gymnastics that could allow a perpetrator like Larry Nasser to flourish for decades? That? For decades. That's it right there. That gets to the heart of it. And the Caroli Ranch it was big. The Carolis, you know the Carolis, right? I mean, like, everybody knows them. If Nadia you watch. Comaneci, yeah. Mary Lou Retton, Carrie Strug. That's they who are you gymnastics. wanted to get in front of if you're an up-and-coming up, up aspiring gymnast. So you actually went down to their ranch in Texas. Yes. What was it like? Well, I mean, it was different than the times that NBC has been to the ranch in the past. I mean, they are legends in gymnastics. Remember Nadia Comaneci in the 70s, the perfect 10 gymnasts, and then they defected from um, Soviet-era Romania and came to the U.S. And, and repeated the magic. You know, they were champion makers, and the Crowley Ranch used to have this mystique. And so many of the gymnasts that we talked to talked about being so excited and so honored to get to set foot on the grounds because it meant you were at the elite of the elite. Now it's a very different place. It's been closed. USA Gymnastics no longer runs it as the National Training Center. It's empty. Bella and Marta live on the property. It's a, it is a ranch. So there are, you know, there's, um, there's a, a big gym, an old gym and a new gym, empty. The cabins are empty. One of the, the cafeteria young... is empty. And so they're there, and they are trying to make sense of what happened and their role if any in in if not per, uh, knowingly allowing it and just how it could have happened for so long at their facility um the, one of the young women alleging that she was uh, abused by nasser talks about how the caroli ranch is in this remote area and there wasn't cell phone service and there's a reason for that the girls have alleged now young women have alleged a culture in team usa gymnastics of of abuse that's their allegation yeah that it, and then there are lawsuits there are lawsuits pending against the crowley's events usa gymnastics michigan state so there's there's a lot that we don't know yet but i think what our dateline hour on sunday really delves into is this question of the culture and where does the responsibility lie and yes i mean look now it looks so nefarious but you have to take it, look at it from the Corollis' perspective. Yes, it's out in this ranch because they have the space. It was isolated. They were, you know, these weren't like Girl Scouts, you know, getting old library books or something. This was the Olympic Training Center, and it was supposed to be intense. And that's actually one of the things that the Corollis talk about. You know, believe in it or not, their theory of the case is you have a lot of gymnasts who are excellent. 
In fact, Marta Crowley told me there would be gymnasts over the years who were beautiful, technical, great gymnasts, and you've never heard of them because when it came to competition, they would collapse because the pressure was so intense. So their theory is you come to the Crowley Ranch and we are going to mimic competition, the intensity of it. There's not a moment of where we're slacking, we're laughing, and we're having fun. From the second you are there, you are on, every day is Olympic gold medal competition day. And they think that is the secret to producing champions who, when it came time to London 2012 or Rio in 2016, when they walk out, it's like another day at the office for them. And that's the Caroli's theory. That's how they explain the intensity of the environment. I but think the a lot of us women who it would be that way. I mean, I think I, uh, there's a reason I never pursued anything like that and wouldn't <laughs> want my children to pursue that because it's just, it's too intense. We had one of the women on our show not long ago talking about how she intentionally hurt herself so she could avoid going because it was yes. just, it was so overwhelming. And now, so where does it stand now? Because we've, ha we've had hundreds, hundreds of women come forward and point the finger at Dr. Nasser as a serial abuser that, w that it went on over and over and over again. And you've spoken with one who, who hasn't said much. Yeah. Um, Michaela Maroney. Michaela Maroney. So a lot of you will remember Michaela. She was in, in the 2012 team that won gold. She was a vaulter. And do you all remember that when she had her not impressed face when she seemed to pout because she got second place? And so that photo went viral. So a lot of us know Michaela, but we've never heard her tell her story publicly like this. And it is a painful story. And, um, you know, other gymnasts like Allie Raceman, who I talked to, would say, you know, they thought Michaela got it the worst. And to hear her tell it, it's hard to, to disagree. She, she went through a lot, and um, I don't want to give too much away, but there was, I think there were moments where she was crying out for help, and people should have heard, and they we, didn't. We have just a little bit of that. Watch this. I think I would have starved at the Olympics if I didn't have him bring me food. Why? I would think you'd have as much food as you needed. You're an athlete. Well, your coaches are just always watching you and wanting to keep you skinny and just there's there's just other things about the culture that are also messed up um, that he used against us. So there's this culture of not eating very much and limiting your calories, but he would what? Buy me a loaf of bread. Like, Literally a loaf of bread. Yeah. There's a reason he did that for her. Well, and this is, um, this goes to what the gymnasts now see as grooming behavior. And this is what's so complex and has a lot of them confused to this day. Because in this intense culture where they couldn't get away with anything, you know, they were on because they wanted to be chosen for that Olympic team. Here's Larry Nasser. Now, he's doing something under the guise of medical treatment. Many, many, many of the girls didn't realize that it was sexual abuse. They're young girls. Michaela was 13 when she says this started happening. So it's under the guise of medical treatment. But he also, they say, was one of the kinder adults around. And in some cases, as you just saw, he would literally sneak them food. It's all complicated because, you know, if you talk to the gymnasts and you really ask them, it's not exactly that Marta Caroli's standing over them saying, don't you dare eat. And Marta Caroli would say, like, we had a buffet. Of course they can eat. But it was much more, um, it sounds like, according to the gymnasts, much more insidious. They felt they couldn't. Mm -hmm. They felt they had to live up to standards. They felt they had to watch those calories and stay skinny. I and think there's a greater it, lesson in this because it's not, I mean, obviously what's happened with Team USA Gymnastics is deeply problematic. But you always worry as a parent that a predator might somehow find his way into your child's life. And the truth is they tend to be wily and clever and kind. It's not some scary boogeyman who's identifiable as, a, as someone who's going to hurt your child as a monster. It's someone like Larry Nasser who, Nasser who will groom and engender trust before right. he, he hurts them. Right, he infiltrates in there and becomes their ally. And in some ways, they sometimes felt like their only ally. I mean, Michaela tells a story that shocked me. Um, she said that when she first got to 2012, she makes the Olympic team. I mean, it's just a huge thing. She gets there and she says, I broke my foot on the first day. Now, I covered the 2012 Olympics. I interviewed Michaela a thousand times. I never knew she had a broken foot. She was vaulting. And she talks about how Larry Nasser kind of covered that injury for her so that she could still compete. And she was grateful. Mm -hmm. he, she, you know, she felt like, oh, he saved my Olympic dream. If they knew I broke my foot, I'd be off that team in two seconds flat, and they'd put an alternate in. So I think the aftermath... There's so much in terms of aftermath and in terms of accountability for USA Gymnastics and the FBI and the USOC, 
But the, the devastating emotional aftermath of, you know, and, and Michaela talks about it, trying to reconcile these two people. This guy who now is like, oh, you are a monster. Right. And what that does to you, just your sense of trust and your own, your, sen your trust in your own judgment uh, and the relationships around you. I mean, the extent of the devastation that that man caused and those who allegedly allowed or enabled him uh, have, have their own reckoning to deal with. Looking forward to watching this. I want to tell you that uh, we did get a statement from Team USA Gymnastics that reads, we are committed to creating a culture that empowers and supports our athletes and focuses on our highest priority, which is the safety and well-being of our athletes. We hope everything we do going forward makes this very clear. All right, so it's Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Yes. Don't miss it. An important Please piece of this It's whole so scandal. important that we not let this go because we got to make sure it doesn't happen again. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you, love. Thank you, Megan. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.